All right, everybody, we got the NBA Finals Game 2 between the Heat versus the Nuggets, and I have three bets for you guys to lock in. One game prop, one player prop, and one parlay. That is three total bets. To do a recap from last game, I my 8-0 streak finally came to an end where my bets went 1-1. One and one. I had the Nuggets minus 8.5 as a 1.5 unit play. That cashed. I had Jokic over 27.5 points for one unit. That unfortunately did not cash as he, at, he ended with exactly 27 points. Just a brutal beat there. As I mentioned, I got three picks for you guys today. Before I get into those picks, a couple housekeeping items for you guys. Number one, while you're here, remember to like the video, comment, let me know your thoughts, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also hit me up at my Twitter handle, Jedi Modi. Housekeeping item number two, I have recently launched a membership page to uh, two, di two different types of tiers for you guys, one for $1, one for $5. The very first link in the video details exactly what each tier consists of. So recommend checking that out if you wanna become a Jedi in training. Now let's get into these picks. Play number one, my favorite play of the evening. We are taking the game total to go over 214. That is at minus 113 odds at the Camby books, which is Bet Rivers, Barstool, and all those different sports books. So number one, the value here, obviously this is the most important thing. Most books have this total at 214 and a half, so a half point better than what we got it at. But Sharp Sportsbook Pinnacle has it at 215. Another Sharp Sportsbook Circa Sports has it at 215 and a half. So my guess is that this total will end closer to 215 and we'll get positive closing line value here. Obviously, betting for value, the most important thing. In terms of the logic behind it, this is classic zigzag method where whatever happened in the previous game, you basically bet the opposite of that. Game one only had 197 points scored with the Nuggets scoring 104, the Heat scoring 93. The thing is, both teams shot horribly in that game. The Heat had a hot shooting fourth quarter to make it look a little bit more respectable. But when you look into it, you do a deep dive. Max Struess went 0 of 9 from 3. Caleb Martin shot 1 of 7 overall. Butler shot 6 of 14 overall and didn't even attempt a free throw, which is insane for him. And Duncan, Duncan Robinson shot 1 of 5 from deep. Now, the, the Heat did have some hot shooting. Obviously, Bam scored 26 points. That was on 25 shots. Not great efficiency there. Haywood Highsmith had a good game. Gabe Vincent had a good game. So it's not as if nobody played well, but it's unlikely that the Heat shoot as poorly as they did in game one. Now, if you want to tell me they shot poorly because A, they were tired and B, because of the altitude in Denver, sure, maybe we can buy that. I think the more likely scenario here is that the Heat played better offensively in game two. And then there's the Nuggets side of it where they only made eight three-pointers in game one, which their offense looked visually really good. It felt like they pretty much always got a good shot. But then when you take a step back and you see that they only scored 104 points and only made eight three-pointers, you realize they could be even better. So for me, this feels like the perfect opportunity to buy low on the total. It's a little bit lower than what it was in game one. And I think that the more likely scenario is that it swings back the other way and both teams have good offensive games. So my favorite play of the evening is the total going over. 214. Next up, the one player prop that I have is going to be Jokic over 27 and a half points. That is at minus 108 odds at the Camby books. Now you guys are going to laugh at me taking Jokic to go over his point total yet again. As I mentioned, he scored 27 points last game and it was just a brutal beat. He had 27 points and he took a very close shot. It was a tough shot. I'm not going to say he missed a bunny, but he did take a very close shot in the closing minutes of the fourth quarter. Obviously, if that went in, he would have cashed the over for us and he would have gone over his point total, but he did not. He ended with exactly 27, so he missed it by half a point, which was brutal. But the thing is, we were lucky to even have it be that close. When you look at the game that Jokic played, he barely shot at all, which is always a fear with Jokic. Now, he hasn't really done that in the playoffs specifically, but this game, he barely shot, especially to start off. In the first half alone, he only attempted three field goals. First field goal that he attempted all game was a layup at the end of the shot clock that was just dumped off to him at the very end of the quarter, end of the shot clock. It was almost like he made it a point to not shoot. And the Nuggets offense looked great. So it's not as if they were struggling with Jokic not shooting. They were getting a good shot every time down the court. So he took three shots in the first half. In the third quarter, he took another two shots. So entering the fourth quarter, he had only attempted five shots. Then things changed. The Heat switched up their defense of how they played Jokic. They weren't fronting him quite as much. They were basically just let him, letting him back down Bam. With that, 
He attempted seven shots in the fourth quarter. He went five of seven and he scored 12 points. So the guess here is that he's going to come out in game two with the same level as aggression as he did in game, the fourth quarter, excuse me, of game one. And that the Heat will probably try something similar to what they did in the fourth quarter as well. The Heat, let's not forget, they won those minutes in the fourth quarter. They outscored the Nuggets in the fourth quarter. They just had so much room to go that they didn't really ever make it a game, but they at least made it somewhat close at some points. So maybe they try that same strategy they tried in the fourth quarter, especially if they play a zone with Jokic, he's probably going to eat that up. Him playing the middle, it's easy jump hook, easy jump shot, or easy pass out. So I don't know if that will really help or hurt the Heat. I just think regardless, the more likely scenario here is that Jokic comes out a little bit more aggressive and that the Heat change up some things on defense, not fronting him as much, letting him back down, bam, and he's more than happy to do that. So Jokic over 27 and a half points, my second play of the evening. And then for the first time for these NBA playoffs, I have a same game parlay for you guys as well. This is a small half unit play, but the same game parlay is going to be Struess over one and a half made three pointers and Michael Porter Jr. over two and a half made three pointers. That parlay is best offered at plus 175 odds at both DraftKings and BetMGM. So the logic here, this is solely betting on players that shot a high volume of three pointers in game one, but did not shoot well. And we're betting on that to turn around in game two, but we're betting on them to still take a high volume of threes, but we're betting on them to shoot better. I mentioned that Struess already went 0 of 9 from deep. That's insane. If he shoots nine three-pointers again, I'm, it's very, very likely that he will make two of them. And then on the Michael Porter Jr. side, he shot 11 three-pointers and he only made two of them. So these both of these teams need these players to shoot. So they're probably going to get up a high volume of threes again. And the more likely scenario here, classic zigzag method, method classic flip-flop method. They're probably going to shoot better than they did in game one, and hopefully they will cash this SGP for us. Now, if you want to take them straight up, you can take Michael Porter Jr. over two and a half at minus 140 at BetMGM, and you can take Struess over one and a half minus 160 at DraftKings. Personally, I thought those were a little more juiced than I would like, so that's why I put them in a parlay. But if you want to take them together, you can. I'm obviously going to track this as a parlay. But that's all I got for you guys. Three bets for you guys to lock in. Game total over two 14 Jokic over 27 and a half points in a same game parlay of Struess over one and a half made three pointers and Michael Porter Jr. over two and a half made three pointers and that's all I got so if you're tailing remember to comment and let me know other than that please remember to like the video subscribe to my YouTube channel check out the membership options if you want to become a Jedi in training thanks for watching and have a good one